Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renard Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, places where you can get those comic books, Kickstarters, and all sorts of other stuff, like what's in my mailbox, and whatever. Alright, so, I'm going to start out with a little apology here about... It's been a couple weeks since I've made an episode, so I'm going to tell you what's been going on. Um, yeah, just a lot of things have been going on. Uh, um, I've got, I got a new couch, it was Easter, and so I spent some time with the family, and, oh yeah, and, uh, it was my anniversary the week after that, so, uh, yeah, me and my wife, we've been married 22 years, so, uh, we went off on a weekend and had some fun, and, uh, oh yeah, and, uh, I got a daughter getting married, and so we've been doing a lot of planning and stuff around that. Here, let me show you this. So check that out. See that? My daughter is uh, Riley Jo and she's getting married on the 8th of May. That's pretty cool. So a lot of crazy stuff going on. Just insane. Uh, who knows how this month is going to go for me and uh, it's going to be pretty busy. And so if I can manage to get done an episode, uh, that'd be great. But if I just don't happen to get one done, please don't be mad at me. And uh, I'll get to uh, the comics I've got from Kickstarter eventually, but it's kind of a slow pace. My read pile is, like, seriously two feet long, and uh, it's crazy. So, um, I feel like that's not really what you came here for, so let's get on to the comic books. So, here's one. It's called Paper Girls. And, uh, let's see, let's get to the credits page here. So, Paper Girls here is, let's see, is the cover showing good? Well, so Paper Girls is written by Brian K. Vaughn. Artist is Cliff Chang. The colorist is Matt Wilson. And lettered by Jared K. Fletcher. This is an image comic, and, uh, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, I... Seriously, I love this book. Um, the coloring is amazing in every issue, and uh, the story is insane. It's got a lot of time travel, a lot of uh, crazy fight things going on. This one has giant mech robots in it. It's crazy, and it's happening in the 90s, this issue, or this volume. Actually, I read them by volumes. Yeah, um, I got this book from uh, a local record shop called Greywell, uh, Greywell Entertainment. They sell CDs, comic books, whatnot. Um, it's one I've been trying to get my local comic shop to get in for me forever, and uh, I don't know what's going on, but they just couldn't get Paper Girls in, so I ended up getting it from this place called Greywell. This is a sticker, by the way, and uh, I'll have to stick it onto my laptop or something. Got two of them actually, so yeah. Two Greywell stickers, awesomeness, huh? And uh, so yeah, uh, they show up and it's uh, New Year's Eve at Y2K, so uh, the girls end up as usual. They uh, go and find them, they find uh, Tiffany, has to go home, and she runs into a goth guy that says he's her husband, and then we meet the Y2K version of Tiffany, and, uh, yeah, she's also goth, and, uh, then we meet an old lady named, uh, Charlotte, and she's a lady that has been drawing comic strips, funny pages, and, uh, these other time travelers have been using her to relay messages in the, uh, comic strips to other time travelers. It's, they use it as a code... And she's been doing this since uh, she met one as a teenager in 1958. So, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, all this time travel stuff. One thing that really cracked me up, here we go, is uh, the way they kept using quotes from the news and uh, other random stuff. This one, yeah. Trump orders government to stop Y2K bug. Oddly enough, he said this back... 
in 2017, way 17 years after the Y2K, so that's funny stuff. Um, there's even a, one of these is, uh, shoot, should have had it ready. Here's a sticker from a Best Buy computer that says, remember to turn off your computer before midnight on 12 31 99 crazy stuff that we actually thought that was going to be a problem. Um, maybe it was. We fixed it before it happened. Who knows? Or maybe we don't even know. Maybe the whole world ended and we just don't even know. So yeah, that's how they did all the chapter breaks in this. It was. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, the, the artwork in uh, Paper Girls is insane. And uh, I, I freaking love it. The ink work is amazing in every issue, and uh, the coloring, the storytelling, it's its so insane. I hear uh, Paper Girls, Paper Girls, did I pronounce that right? Uh, Paper Girls is going to be a show on Amazon, and so far Amazon is doing an amazing job on that uh, Invincible and The Boys. And so I'm pretty sure it's in good hands. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, Paper Girls, Volume 4. Check it out. Uh, you can get this at your local comic shop. You can order, order it on the walmart.coms, uh, whatever. I prefer you uh, actually go to your comic shop and say, hey, get this Paper Girls for, in for me and uh, start a hold and see what is on the shelves and what jumps out at you because uh, supporting your local comic shop is awesome. And uh, seriously, if you don't support it, sometimes your comic shop goes away and like me, you have to drive to one that's two and a half hours away, and uh, that's not really that fun. Uh, so make sure you support your local comic shop, keep them around, um, because it could get harder without a comic shop. All right, so that's Paper Girls. Now I'm moving on to one called the Saturn Effect Alpha. Ooh, that's a lot of glare. This is a very super shiny, glossy cover. Um, the back cover is essentially blank, blank other than the website, but uh, as you can see here, that's pretty cool. Um, I think, let me see here, judge it up to uh, next to, oh yeah, it is about a centimeter bigger than your standard comic book size, which is okay, it still fits in the bags, I think, And uh, but yeah, this cover, it's insanely glossy. So let me get into uh, the credits here. Saturn Effect Alpha is written by Chris Moses, art by Francesco Mavoli, and colored by Marco Tarambar de Alessandro, logo by Winston Gombro, and lettered by Reed Hickney, sorry, Reed Hinkley Barnes. Um, so let me start off with. Uh, Reading this comic uh, was actually a really good treat. Uh, I got this comic from Kickstarter, and uh, let's see, this comic book was so kinetic and so fast, and there was so much energy in this first issue that I was actually holding my breath while reading it, which is not a good thing when because I was at Plasma when I was reading this comic, and. Uh, yeah, I was holding my breath, and then I'm like, <gasps> when I finally turned a page, and uh, holy cow, uh, such a good read. Um, this takes place pretty far in the future, and uh, we, Earth, humankind, let's see here, P turn the page to it. Um, humankind, I think we're humankind here, are living in space stations, and... Uh, Orbiting what I'm thinking is Saturn, based on the title of this book, Saturn, here. Um, so we're living in space stations, and uh, we're forcing the people down on the planet to uh, do work for us. I don't know, mining or something. And, uh, and there is civil unrest going on. Uh, let's see, two years after... Well, uh, let's see. It goes to two years earlier, and oh man, somebody's calling me. 
can't have that song come on because then I'll, it'll flag me for copyright. Um, so, it does a flat, uh, flashback where uh, these one of these space stations was uh, blown up. We don't know what's going on. And uh, there was a war going on, all sorts of stuff. Uh, gosh dang it, where's all my pages here? What the? There's a war going on. And uh, it looks like the Martians are fighting uh, humans. Sorry, that phone call's got me all distracted and crazy. Um, and so there is a war going on between uh, muties and normals. And uh, it's pretty crazy. The, I guess the people that are down on the mines, the gravity and the being on the planet has affected them to where they change or evolve. So it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, so what we got here going on is, is, I don't even, it was so crazy and kinetic that uh, it looked like there was a, uh, a boycott, a picket um, going on. And uh, the uh, guards, they just started shooting these people. And uh, so then people jump in to help them. And uh, these officers, different soldiers, they all jump in and uh, they're either, they're getting shot or maimed or killed. And and then the issue is just over and I'm like, what? I gotta read more? Holy crap. And uh, so, um, Saturn Effect Alpha issue two is currently on Kickstarter right now. And uh, I've got to jump in on that, back it so that I could, I, I know what's going on in the next issue, and uh, I suggest you do the same thing. Go on to uh, Kickstarter, search up Saturn Effect Alpha. I will put the uh, Kickstarter in the notes, and I will tweet all about it when I post this on the Twitters. So check out Saturn Effect Alpha on Kickstarter right now. You can get issue one and two together in the same Kickstarter if you need to. So I recommend that stuff. It was a good read. It was so crazy. Uh, it it made me think of um, Aeon Flux in a way and uh, Total Recall mixed together. If you took Aeon Flux and Total Recall, bam, you'd have Saturn Effect Alpha. So check it out. Really good stuff. Really good art team. Good storytelling. And uh, yeah, I really don't have anything bad to say about that one. Um, no critiques or anything. So check that one out on Kickstarter in my show notes or on my Twitters. Okay, next up on my uh, review list, read list that I did, it was Palomino. I got this one from Kickstarter also. Uh, Palomino, the entire art team on this one is Stephen Frank from Dark Planet Comics. Stephen Frank, who you may know, uh, this is how I know him, is uh, he did a comic book called Silver. It's a black and white comic book about... Uh, vampires and um, stuff like that. I ran into him at San Diego Con way, way back in 2010 and uh, got hooked on silver. Good stuff and ooh, I almost turned it to a bad page there. But this is good stuff. Uh, Stephen Frank's art style makes me think of, um, uh, let's see, Tim Sale comes to mind when I think of uh, his stuff. And yeah, silver, like I said, silver was not colored, and so it's really awesome to see this, see his art style colored. Check that one out. That is a really cool page. I hope it's clear and focused. Um, so, Palomino, wow, and I gotta mention, so this cover, let's see, is this one also bigger than standard comic? Eh, nope. Anyway, Palomino, this cover has a kind of weird feltness feel to it. It's, uh, it's not smooth or glossy, and it's kind of, I don't know, it, it has a different feel for as far as covers go. Really good stuff. Um, so we meet this guy named Eddie Lang, and he is a private investigator who uh, basically just does the regular um, private eyeing stuff, taking pictures of cheating spouses and uh, whatnot, and uh, lets the spouse know that uh, their partner's cheating and, you know, the basic kind of stuff that you don't really want to do for a living, but you got to pay the bills. 
And then uh, we find out this uh, PI, he, all, he has a daughter who, uh, let me see, make sure. He has a daughter that's, make sure it's not swearing or anything right there on that. So she's sloughing school and uh, she's, she gets caught by this country girl on a horse going by who you later see at the uh, Palomino playing uh, singing. And so it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so Eddie Lang, in his spare time when he's not a private investigator, he goes to the Palomino and he plays a steel guitar. Really cool stuff. Um, I gotta quit saying really cool stuff, but it is really cool stuff. So check this out. Oh man. There's Eddie Lang right there in his fancy suit going to the Palomino with his steel guitar and uh, getting ready to play. Cool stuff. And uh, yeah, this was a great read. Um, very cinematic. It's not, there's no superpowers or anything going on. It's just a story that's taken place in, I think, 1982. And uh, it's just about a private investigator that he, uh, that uh, plays music and is now on a case. Uh, this blonde girl that I showed you earlier, she, uh, something bad happens to her and uh, he, the husband of this girl, comes to Eddie Lang and uh, asks him to get on the case. And uh, then some thugs show up and tell him he doesn't want him on the case, which I don't think he really did want him off the case. Uh, I think the thugs just wanted him off the case. Crazy stuff. Good story. Um, yeah, so I got this from Kickstarter. It's from Dark Planet Comics, so you might be able to find it on da darkplanet.com. I will find links to everything and put them up there for you. Uh, really good stuff. Really loving this story. And uh, yeah, looks like I'm going to be back in the next Kickstarter on that one. Really, 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 really excited for that. Okay, oh, now my next comic that I'm going to tell you about. I need my phone for because that's how I read this one. And, uh, oh, my comic shop messaged me back. They must have some comics waiting for me. Um, let's see, where's my photo album? So, here we go here. Let's see. Speaking of my comic shop, that's my comic shop right there. Their new location, which I haven't been to yet. Gamers Asylum in Ogden, Utah. Check them out. Uh, they are moving as of May 1st. They will be in that new location. So, the comic I'm going to tell you about right now is called... Oh, oh, man, how do I get that glare to not show up on it? Okay. Atmonen. Wow. How do I do this with... I've, it's kind of a new camera, so I'm getting used to it. Or, actually, I haven't gotten used to it. So, Atmonen, I found on uh, Twitter, and I've been reading... It through um, web comics. You go onto web comics and check, look up at Monin. Oh, that's there. You go. So you can spell it right. At Monin. It's, it's a pretty interesting one. It is about a gargoyle, and uh, let's see here. Let's go to, to the beginning of my. Oh yeah, check that out. There we go. Focus. Come on, is it focusing? I can't tell. There we go. So Atmonen is a gargoyle, and in the daylight, he's a statue. And this girl, uh, Lena Almgreen, she she's a freckly little girl that uh, she goes to the statue and draws and talks to it all the time. And uh, she, she calls him Rain. I don't know why. Maybe because it's usually raining when she goes to talk to him. Good stuff. Um, I, I really love this art style. As you can see, it's gray toned. But it uh, man, it, as soon as this thing goes to print, I am totally getting me a copy of it. Good stuff. Like I said, she goes to the statue to draw. I don't, I don't know how clear this is showing up. But uh, yeah, there's a scene of her drawing it. But then uh, things heat up. This is not a safe for kids comic. Uh, this is 
this is very adult themed and uh, romance flies in this comic. And I'm not going to tell you a lot about stuff, but uh, basically something happens and uh, she needs to be saved by him and and he saves her and uh, she wakes up in a bed in a church and crazy stuff. Nothing happened yet um, sexually, but it gets crazy. Oh yeah, and he looks like this. Very teeth looking skull thing. Whew, scary. I don't know how. You don't be scared by that, but apparently Atmunin uh, is an old word for uh, name, and so the whole story is about uh, names, and uh, he can't reveal his name or he becomes a slave, and uh, so he's, when she asks what his real name is so that she doesn't have to call him Rain all the time, he kind of goes crazy on her and uh, gets mad, but then, yeah. But a long time ago, there was a priest, and uh, he he threatened Rain, the gargoyle's sister. Let's see, too much glare here. There we go. Is that? No, nope, still too much glare. So, uh, Rain has a sister, and uh, the the priest threatens the sister. Says, "I'm gonna. I, you could save her if you uh, just tell me your name, and I'll let her go." And uh, and uh, he tells the priest his name and he becomes a slave to the priest forever turning into stone by day and a demon that uh, does the priest's bidding by night and uh, I'm not going to tell you too much because holy spoilers it, it just goes crazy from there and uh, the story is so good you've got to read Rain, uh, Atmanen on webcomics really good stuff And the way that uh, this artist is drawing um, these characters, I freaking love this art style. It's so good. And uh, yeah, check out Atmanin on webcomics. Um, I know I don't usually review webcomics, but uh, I had to read this one. And I guarantee if I ever see it in print, I am going to have it in my collection. And I will read it again and tell you all about it then. But uh, until then, I'm telling you about it in digital form. Atmanin is on webcomics right now. Webtoons, that's what it's called. Sorry, I'm so unfamiliar with webtoons that there's a few things I do read on there, but not too many. And uh, yeah, check it out. I will have uh, tags and everything in the show notes and my Twitters and so that you could find everything that I'm talking about. Make it a way easier than trying to figure out what I'm stumbling around. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, next segment of my show, and that is the mailbox. The mailbox is where I tell you about the things that showed up in my mailbox. Uh, this just showed up minutes ago before I made this episode. This is a Crow Creek sticker, and uh, it looks like a sticker of the cover of the book I'm going to be getting in the mail pretty soon. And uh, I don't really know what this one is. It's so dark. Uh, it looks like it's a crow and an axe. So these are going to be going on the box that Crow Creek will eventually end up in. That's how I do things here is I put the stickers of the comics on the box. So that showed up. Crow Creek. Uh, thank you uh, John Freeman for that one. I can't wait to get the book and add it to my read list. And here's some that actually showed up too also. Um, this is Adventures of Leah Rowe. Check that one out. This is a uh, naughty, not safe for work. Wow, there's, I should have closed my window so that you can see what I'm doing without glare. And, or taking this out of the bag. Uh, so this is Leah Rowe. Liara Rowe. Sorry. Liara Rowe. And uh, I don't know what is going on in this story other than the... Uh, the Kickstarter uh, grabbed my attention and I had to back it. Really cool stuff. Um, let's see. What? Yeah, uh, it's 28 pages of story by Jen Hickman. And uh, that's pretty much all I can say about it now until I read it. 
But this will be going into my read pile pretty soon. And um, let's see, what do I got here? I got some bookmarks from Crossover Division. It's pretty cool stuff. And I got a letter with it. Looks like documentation and stuff in letter form. Pretty much just a thank you for backing the Kickstarter, you know, but that's a pretty cool way to do it. I like it. And here's the comic itself, Crossover Division. Dang, next time I do this, I will have to close that blind so that you can see. Um, yeah, Crossover Division is a comic about uh, people that um, basically storybook stuff comes to life for real, and uh, they have to go out and protect people from it. So that is the crossover over division. Next up is Cult Heroes. I got some postcards of, from the Cult Heroes here. This is from um, Raymond Estrada. He does the entire art and writing and everything on the uh, Cult Heroes. He also did one called uh, Shotgun Full of Roses, which I don't think it ever made it to print. The Kickstarter failed, so uh, it never charged me and I never got the book. But I think I have the book somewhere in my digital file somewhere. I just need to find it and read it because that might be the only form of Shotgun Full of Roses I'll get. But anyway, Cult Heroes, really cool artwork. I have some blank space on my wall. These will go on. And, uh, oh yeah, I got stickers also of this. Three different stickers. Those will be going on my comic book boxes as well. But here is the comic, Cult Heroes. I got this awesome trailer. It looks like a scene from Smallville. The art style is insanely awesome. Uh, very gritty and inky and uh, just overall really cool. Something that looks like it could easily be like an album cover or something. I really love this, and yeah, I gotta find that Colt, uh, shotgun full of roses sometime and figure out a way to read it. Uh, download it to my phone and read that one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will work on that this weekend so that I could tell you all about shotgun full of roses, which is by Raymond Estrada. Oh, yeah. And then these came in the mail. Woof. These are my Miskatonic Highs, both issues 10 and 10. Uh, I always get two of Miskatonic High because I've hooked a friend who I call Harlock. I don't know if he wants me to say his real name. So I'm going to say Harlock and I uh, back this, I think. Uh, I even, on the thank you page, I put Harlock and GB from Renton Art Studios Comics on the thank you. So I will be letting him choose because I can't, these are both awesome covers. Check them out and I can't choose which one I want, so it's easier to just say, which one do you want? And that way I don't have to choose. Because seriously, awesome covers. Thank you, uh, Miskatonic High, as always. You know I'm a huge fan of the Miskatonic High. And, uh, oh yeah, this also came in my mail. Oof, I dropped something. This is This Land from, uh, oh well, I, that was my notes that just fell on the floor. And I got, a. Awesome thank you letter. This says, Gary, as I pack this up, it felt weird. Oh, wait, nope. That's a letter from a different thing. Sorry. Maybe if I didn't. Oh, that's the letters from Tart. I got, I got a book called Tart in the mail. Wow, super glossy cover on this one as well. I got two Tarts. And uh, the reason I got these two Tarts is I entered a contest when I bought uh, tart from my local comic shop, Gamers Asylum in Ogden, Utah. And uh, when I posted pictures of it and uh, stuff, I was entered into a contest and I won this original artwork. So check this out. This artwork is from, uh, let me find the art, Ludovic Sale. Really cool stuff. I love that space girl. Uh, really, really awesome. Um, I will have to figure out. I will have to find a nice frame for that and put it up because seriously, look at that beauty. It is some good stuff. So I got two signed uh, issues of Tarte and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one with this letter and I'm going to take one to my comic shop, Gamers Asylum, 
in Ogden, Utah, and I'm going to say, hey, this is for you guys to keep or give away or sell, whatever you want to do. Is it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, it says, Gary, as I packed up this, I felt weird sending only the artwork, and so I grabbed two copies of Tart 1 and signed them. One for you, and if it's not too much trouble, one for your local comic shop, Gamers Asylum. Uh, if it is not too inconvenient, you can simply give it to a friend, whatever. Uh, if you do drop it off, and they keep it, or sell it, or give it away. Yeah. So, yep, one comic, one issue for me, and uh, one for Gamers Asylum. And, yeah, this is one I already have in my collection. But I do not have one that's already signed, so that's pretty cool. Okay. Wow, that was a lot of mail that I've been getting lately. And uh, actually, because it's been weeks since I've made an episode. Now we are going to move on to the campaign corner of my show. where This is the part where I talk about Kickstarters and Indiegogos. And uh, what you should be backing right now. What day is it right now? Today is the 23rd as I record this so that means that one's already passed sorry about that I should have done my show the show sooner so I'm going to mention one called we are Scarlet Twilight number one this is one I'm backing and it's inspired by Golden Age comic pulp magazines uh, with cyber cyberpunk aesthetics it is 24 pages of a four issue run so we're getting the first now, and there will be four issues total by the time the story is done. Awesome. I hope they do a trade, too, because I will want that. Um, anyway, it looks like 30s or 40s comic art style, and uh, Benjamin Morse is the sole art team of this, writer everything, colorist, the whole nine yards, and uh, it's about Cam Captain Lancelot. He's a 30s all-American crime fighter, who accidentally creates the world's greatest villain before waking up a century in the future. It's so cool. Uh, so it, it sounds like it starts in the 30s, and uh, then we end up with some Spider-Man 2099 kind of stuff. Time travel, a lot of cool stuff. I hope there's some cloning in it. That's my favorite comic book uh, topic. But, you know, time travel is my second. So we've already got one of them. That's pretty cool stuff. And... I also hear uh, he's printing through Kablam, which that's where I print through, so that's one reason I'm backing it on top of the awesome art and story. And uh, yeah, got to support my fellow Kablam guys. That's who I print through, and uh, I love them. If you ever want to print a comic book, I highly suggest going through Kablam. They're awesome. They, uh, they work with you so well. They have awesome t-shirts, which I have two of, a black and a white one. And uh, really cool stuff. They print well. Their books always look nice. I'm never dissatisfied with what they have. And yeah, I've never had an issue with any of their books. Other than one time, one copy of my Peter Pan the Vampire comic actually had someone else's book printed inside it. But uh, you know what? That's cool because then I had a, a free comic book to read. And uh, so it was no big deal. And uh, yeah, made a cool giveaway that uh, I was able to do. Okay, so that is... We are Skylight, Scarlight, oh. we are Scarlet Twilight, number one, on Kickstarter right now until April 25th. So that means you have two days to back it. You better get in on that one really quick because it looks awesome. And you will not want to miss that one. Firebreak, number two, is on Kickstarter right now. After his nemesis pulls off a physically impossible escape, a villain in investigates... So, this is the story from the villain's perspective. Uh, it is 28 pages of a 24-page story. Oh, okay, so basically you're going to get four pages of back matter and stuff. All right, so 24-page story, you get 28 pages. That's pretty cool. It's going to be a six-issue series. And the previews that I saw on the uh, Kickstarter, they look awesome. And uh, I can't wait to see what this one is. So check out Firebreak number two on Kickstarter until April 26th. You have three days to back that one. Tales from Neverland. This is one that I just barely, barely, barely discovered. 
Sorry, getting dry. This one, Tales from Neverland, is an epic anthology of comics featuring stories about the characters from Neverland. I wish I would have been contacted about this. I would have thrown in some of my Peter Pan stories for them. Because as you know, uh, I make a Peter Pan the Vampire comic. And uh, so as soon as I see anything related to Peter Pan, uh, I jump on it. And I had to jump on this one. It is going to be, the cam campaign goes till the 29th, so that means you have about a week to uh, back it yourself. Check it out. There are nine stories from nine different creative teams. So many good names in this one, too. Uh, do, do check out Tales from Neverland on Kickstarter right now until April 29th. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get my copy. I, ha I have a huge collection of, uh, well, not really huge, but... I have quite a collection of Peter Pan stuff going right now, and uh, it'll be it'll look great on the shelf next to all that stuff. Tales from Neverland on Kickstarter till April 29th. All right, and speaking of vampires, Unicorn Vampire Hunter one and two are on Kickstarter right now. Uh, when the first one came around, I didn't have any money in my account, and so my funding didn't go through on that one. So I was so happy to see. Unicorn Vampire Hunter 1 and 2 come on to Kickstarter. So I am definitely getting issues 1 and 2 this time around. And I am doing everything I can to make sure there's money in that account when the uh, campaign ends on April 29th. Because I really do not want to miss this one. It's got 24 pages of awesomeness. A whimsical fantasy adventure about a unicorn who hunts vampires. With his horn, of course. And this unit. Unicorn Vampire Hunter made himself known now. So now he's got a whole forest full of uh, vampires that want to get him. And it's awesome. 24 pages of story. And there's stickers. Check out the stickers. Uh, I'm a big fan of stickers, as you know. Here, I'll show you. This is the box to my DC bo thing that I'm using as a desk right here in front of me. So, yeah. I stick all the stickers on the box of whatever the comic there, or whatever is in there. So yeah, it, say my comic, the box is full of White Ash comics. It's going to have White Ash stickers all over the outside. Everything from Kickstarter is in its own box. Actually, I have a few boxes of Kickstarter stuff. And uh, yeah, all those Kickstarter stickers I get end up on those boxes. I love it. It's a good system. And uh, yeah, keep sending me stickers because I love stickers. So check out Unicorn Vampire Hunter 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now until April 29th. Next up is Kia Wordsmith, The In Between. Ooh, yeah, this story sounds awesome. This comic shows what happens between issues 1 and 2 of Kia Wordsmith as she flees into the in between with her strange little companion. Kia lives in a city where magic and science work in harmony and has been peaceful for centuries until a war starts. 24 pages of this and uh, you can get issues 1, 2 and the in between. So do check this one out. Kia Wordsmith in between on Kickstarter right now. And as always, you can always get all three issues. Finish the whole thing through one Kickstarter. That really helps them out too. And uh, check out Kia Wordsmith in between on Kickstarter till April 30th. Thoughtscape Comics number one is on Kickstarter right now. A sci-fi anthology book series in the tradition of 2080, Black Mirror and the Twilight Zone. Anything is possible in these stories. Anything is possible in these talk tales of dramatic story and transformation. 44 pages of serialized and self-contained stories. So some of the stories will continue on to the next volume and some of them are one and done's, which, you know, that's a pretty cool thing to me. A lot of cool art styles in that. Uh, everything from the previews I saw was awesome. Check out Thoughtscape Comics number one on Kickstarter till May 3rd. All right, Glenn in Monsterland is next. Uh, Glenn in Monsterland is not on Kickstarter. It is on Indiegogo. So check out Glenn in Monsterland on Indiegogo right now. 
Uh, I was messaged on Twitter about this and I checked it out and it looks amazing. 48 pages of all ages fun, comedy, adventure about a gang of monsters who rebel against their evil masters. So this is a world where uh, monsters have kind of taken over the entire world. And uh, grotesque creatures free, freely roam, leaving havoc in their wake. And the only people who are left are too stupid to be scared by them. Glynn is an apprentice witch left in a dungeon to rot. The story is completely done. There's 52 pages in this issue after extras, and, which doesn't sound too bad to me, the art style is awesome. It made me think of Saturday morning cartoons, and uh, really good stuff. Um, so check out Glenn in Monsterland on Indiegogo until May 5th. Next up is Mutiny Magazine number zero. Mutiny Magazine, uh, from the what I've seen of it, looks like a new wizard magazine. Uh, I, I read Wizard Magazine from issue one all the way to the last issue. Um, that's where I got my comic book news when I was a kid, and uh, heck, half the things I'm reading now, I'm, I discovered Invincible because of Wizard Magazine. They did an article on it that said uh, all about it, and when I read the, the part where there was a character who clones herself, Duplicate, I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta check this out. Not to mention, uh, when I found out the artist was from Utah, uh, Ryan Otley, I'm also from Utah in case you didn't know, I'm like, jeez, I gotta check that out. And so, and I've been happy with it. Like, uh, Duplicate is hardly even in it, really. But, man, the Invincible story is amazing. So, uh, anyway, my point is, I miss Wizard Magazine, and so if this thing comes around and starts hitting newsstands, I will get a subscription to it. Uh, Cause I'm, I would love to see one of those things come back. In fact, I'll even uh, send in some of my Peter Pan stuff for that if they are interested. Who knows? Anyway, indie and mainstream comics together in one diverse magazine. See, and that's something you didn't really get a whole lot in Wizard is indie comics. So I like everything about this. This magazine looks awesome and it's gonna be 55 pages or more depending on how many, uh, uh, what are my stretch goals? 55 pages or more, depending on how many stretch goals they reach. So uh, that's a big uh, factor in it. So check it out. Um, Mutiny Magazine, number zero, on Kickstarter until May 8th. Wow, I got a lot of Kickstarters to go through here. It's been pretty crazy. Lamp Black, number one. Oh man, the artwork on this one looks so crazy good. It's a fantasy horror comic in cinematic style. A girl whose paintings come to life. A deaf boy who wants to be a soldier. And a story of passion, art, and war inspired by Studio Ghibli. Lamp Black is a black pigment made from the suit, from suit and primarily used in paints and inks. It's 24 pages. It's horror, there are horrifying ink monsters, wondrous forbidden magic, and American Sign Language, Runaways, and a cat. And yeah, that, that right there has me interested right, just alone. It is eight, eight and a half by 11, long bound, so the uh, story is going to be long, not tall like uh, comic books. That'll be cool. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really got me interested. The art style looks amazing. Um, the monsters look amazing that are made of the lamp black ink. And uh, American Sign Language in a book, that's really cool. Um, yeah, you don't see a whole lot of that. Well, you do it occasionally, but not really. And uh, so everything about this sounds interesting. Check out Lamp Black, number one, on Kickstarter until May 6th. I had an eighth one out of order here. All right, next up on Kickstarter is Tank McGregor and the Mechanical Menace. This is an eight, an epic sci-fi comedy graphic novel, 121 pages. It looks amazing, it looks hilarious. The art style kind of makes me think of uh, Invincible, actually. Um, it's got a really cartoony kind of Invincible 
or a cartoony style to it. Um, it's sort of in the mix between, um, oh, I don't know. It's got a little Mike Mignola and Ryan Otley mixed together, uh, to be honest. And so check out Tank McGregor and the Mechanical Minutes on Kickstarter right now. Um, yeah, it's on Kickstarter till May 6th. Abyssal Albion, number two, a Lovecraftian Eldritch survivor horror. AA returns, what am I, why did, AA returns, I don't know what that means, I'm, my notes are bad, sorry, um, AA returns, issue two of Cthulhu, oh, okay, I get it, Ugh. Abyssal Albion returns, issue two of Cthulhu Mythos inspired post-apocalyptic survivor horror set amongst the ruins of modern Britain, it's a project that Kickstarter loves, it's 28 pages. It's a black and white comic book. And it looks amazing. The story looks awesome. Check out Abyssal Albion number two on Kickstarter right now until May 7th. Um, yeah. Do check that one out. Uh, oh, I'm sure you can get issues one and two on the Kickstarter. As always, I mean, who would do a Kickstarter where you can only get the one issue? I don't know anybody who has yet. Sparrow number one is on Kickstarter right now. It's a coming-of-age story starring Elena Ewan, daughter of a legendary Heroes of the Past, 18-year-old high school senior, daughter of the hero Red Falcon, and also the Sentinel, two founding members of the superhero team known as the Night Guard. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, the preview, I read it, and it, it gets you right there. You, like, as soon as you read the short preview, you are drawn in, you want to read more, and uh, that's exactly what happened. As soon as I read those preview pages, and I saw the, how good the artwork it was, and uh, that little uh, slice of the book just grabbed me, and I have to know what happens. I instantly jumped on board on this one. Sparrow number one on Kickstarter till May 7th. Do check that one out. Sentinel number three is on Kickstarter right now. Sentinel number three, the ship, is leaving the station. The Sentinel saga continues. As we meet the crew of the OAA Redstone. 24 pages of comic, space-based society known as the AOO, Orion Army Authority, follows a crew of the crew of the ship Redstone. As a reporter, Sirius Betty, embedded onto the ship, investigates a new threat to sp the Spacefaring Republic. So check out Sentinel number three on Kickstarter right now till May 10th. You can get all the catch-up issues right now. Check it out. And now we're on to Time Before Time Process Edition. So uh, Time Before Time is an image comic. It's already out there. And uh, this is the making of Time Before Time, a process book examining the creation of the image comic Time Before Time, step by step from the idea to the finished comic book. 48 pages. Sounds really cool to me. Uh, I'm always interested in how comic books are made, and so uh, I'm interested in finding out how this book would be made. It's a Time Before Time is a wire meets quantum leap kind of story. And uh, yeah, it'll be really cool to uh, delve into the way comic books are made, how they're pitched, and how they're conceived from idea to finished product, and all that fun stuff. How they find an artist, all that fun stuff. So check out Time Before Time, the process edition on Kickstarter till May 12th. Smokeweed, see the future. Okay. This is in the Destiny Universe, uh, Destiny New York Universe, sorry about that, Pat Shand, and, uh, anyway, the Destiny New York, uh, universe continues with Smokeweed See the Future graphic novel. A carefree San Diegoan seer starts a business of growing marijuana that gives its smokers visions of the future. So usually in this universe, seers can, uh, they plunk their face into some water 
and uh, they see the future, and then they tell the uh, person what's been going on, what's going to happen to them. Basically, it's a prophecy kind of thing. A little muddled, not sure what's going on, but they tell them the vague details of it, and they go from there. So in this one, this is a branch off story about it. There is a lot of uh, Destiny New York branch off stories, and they're all worth reading. Um, man, my mailbox is going to get filled up with some of these stuff soon because I got a lot of them coming. And if you're watching this, Pat Shand, feel free to stick uh, Prison Witch and uh, Necromancer and what else is coming? I, I have so many things coming from you right now. If you just want to stick all those into one package, save yourself some stampage and uh, just send them my way. Or if you just want to send them one at a time, that's fine too. I don't... Either way, it's like Christmas if they just keep coming one at a time. Anyway, Smokeweed, See the Future graphic novel is on Kickstarter right now till May 14th. Um, I'm excited to read this and and, and everything. Um, oh yeah, and it's got uh, artwork by um, Princess Jim, uh, Jen St. Orange, that's her real name. Uh, check her out. She's got some really great art styles, and uh, so it's going to be great on this book uh, of all this weird, loopy, weed-smoking nonsense. And uh, yeah, check out Smoke Weed, See the Future on Kickstarter till May 14th. Off into the Sunset Anthology. Here we got a 120-page collection of stories inspired by Westerns, curated by a Brent Harshman. Numerous creators based on westerns, westerns in space, western spies, western knights, actual westerns, all sorts of different kind of westerns. So we're going to see some spaghetti westerns, I hope. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Huge, huge lineup of artists. And uh, Off Into the Sunset Anthology is on Kickstarter until May 14th. Check it out. Man, I really wish I had more money because there are so many good things out there right now. Next up is Stan Lee's Back Channel Volume 1. Now, I know a lot of people on Twitter have been giving this a hard time because Stan Lee's a known person, and he's passed on. And But the the other people that have been working with Stan Lee on this, uh, it's not a, any... It's, they're not trying to do a cash grab or anything. They created something, and they just want to get it out there. Now that I've said that... This is a collected edition of Volume 1 of the hit webcomic by Stan Lee, Tom Eckel, and Andy Tong. And uh, they this has been in the works since 2015. The story is about a child who comes of age and he realizes that... Well, okay, sorry. When a child comes of age, they realize that their parents don't know everything. They aren't exact as wonderful as you've always thought they were and uh, so this is how we reconcile what we think about our parents and what actually is and uh, mix in superpowers and all that strange stuff into the relationship and you have Stan Lee's back channel number one the collected edition of all these these were all on uh, web webtoons originally so if you do want to check them out, they're probably out there already, and you'll see what you're going to get in print. But this has been in the works since 2015, and uh, it's a 130-page hardcover. Looks really cool, and it's got Stan Lee in it. I mean, uh, say what you will about it, but Stan Lee was actually a really good creator, and uh, and it, I, I'm excited to see what's going on with this one. And all you naysayers out there, just because uh, you, you're thinking because famous people are trying to use Kickstarter and whatever, it, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't hurt you or nothing for them to try and get their things backed. And sometimes this is the only way to get things uh, printed and created. And in a different, different sets of eyes, all sorts of, there's a lot of reasons why people use Kickstarter, so... The only way you can really uh, show your voice is by uh, with your dollar. If you don't like it, don't spend it. So, 
That said, check out Stanley's back channel, Volume 1, on Kickstarter till May 19th. I'm sorry, I'm... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes things just upset me. I don't know why people are throwing a fit about it. If you don't like something, don't buy it. That's, that's how it works for me. Okay, Saturn Effect Alpha. That is the comic book issue one that I reviewed. And uh, now it is Saturn Effect Alpha number two is on Kickstarter right now. Check it out. It's on there till May 19th. The second installment of A Sci-Fi Journey. 27 pages in this one. Wow, that is awesome. And the artwork is crazy. It's good. I love it. And the story is in, it's in space. There's a revolution going on. Do check out Saturn Effect Alpha number two on Kickstarter till May 19th. And, oh, here we go. What is this? And this is the letter that came with that Saturn Effect Alpha that I got. So it says, thanks a bunch. Keep up the great indie con content. Thank you guys for uh, sending me your book. And thank you for trusting me with uh, reading your book. I don't know what that means. Anyway, just thank you. Uh, keep creating what you're creating, putting it out there. Check out Saturn Effect Alpha, number two, on Kickstarter till May 19th. All right, here's one that's not a comic book, but and uh, but it is one I feel like it needs to be uh, put out there. MC Lars's Fear of the Black Chain Planet. It is an album. He's a musician. He makes songs. Um, if you don't know who MC Lars is, go onto your Google or YouTube and search up uh, Hot Topic is Not Punk Rock. That song is amazing. I mean, seriously, if anything, that song right there will sell you on how awesome MC Lars is. Uh, he also sings uh, Download This Song. It's a story about the old pirating back when there was a Napster. I don't know if you guys remember Napster. I'm, that just says that I'm old if I still remember that nonsense. Anyway, check out uh, Hot Topic is Not Punk Rock. I love that song. It is so true, but it doesn't stop me from going there for my Spider-Man shirts and whatnots. So check out MC Lars, Fear of a Black Chain Planet on Kickstarter right now. Help MC Lars create an album about fatherhood, the pandemic, and late stage capitalism. His most personal album to date. Check it out. MC Lars on Kickstarter right now. Till May 20th. It's an awesome album. Check it out. Well, I haven't heard any of it, but I assume it's an awesome album based on the other songs I've heard from MC Lars. Do check it out on Kickstarter till May 20th. Lovecraft P.I. Uh, the Curious Case of the Reanimator Noir Hardcover. So this is entirely black and white. It's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, I previously read um, The Curious Case of the Reanimator. Did a review on it last month, I think. And uh, it was good stuff. This is 114 pages of inked and lettered Detective Ward Lovecraft of the Miskatonic High Supernatural Detective Agency on a case in New Orleans about a mysterious cult that is trying to raise the mighty Cthulhu. Yeah, it was a good read, and uh, it's really... I, I'm not really into this Miskatonic Lovecraftian stuff, but all of a sudden, it's everywhere now. Uh, Miskatonic High, super one of my most favorite comics to read right now, and I just barely finished the last episode of uh, Lovecraft Country, and uh, which was really hard to watch because stupid HBO. I'll talk, I'm talk about that later when I get to the show's stuff. And, uh, and Lovecraft P.I. Really loving this stuff. And, uh, and I'm noticing now that a lot of the things I like, like I've been a Dean Koontz fan since I was seven years old, which, oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. And so I've been reading Dean Koontz since I was seven. And uh, watching all these shows, like Stranger Things and that, I am seeing that he was deeply inspired by Lovecraft, and uh, and I never knew. I had no idea what Lovecraft was when I was, well, I'm 40 now, and I still don't know what Lovecraft is. Uh, well, just barely beginning to understand some of it. So, check out Lovecraft P.I. 
The Curious Case of the Reanimator Noir hat Hardcover on Kickstarter right now until May 21st. It is good stuff, it's a good read, and it's a good way to help out an awesome creator. Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 is on King Kickstarter right now. It's a sleuthing steampunk spouses. Wow, that's a lot of S's. This is a story about sleuthing steampunk spouses. The third issue in a steampunk mini mystery comic miniseries. A story of dedication, seduction, death, and pistons. Lord and Lady Ravencroft, late Ravenscroft, are two brilliant scientists and inventors whose bohemian lifestyle and inventive ways are in direct contrast to the straight and proper ways of Victorian England. 22 pages of awesome stuff. They have stickers. They have a cover by Kaylin Smith, uh, creator of the, um, there it is, creator of the uh, For Goodness Sake comic that I'm a huge fan of right now. And uh, yeah, so check out Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 on Kickstarter right now till May 30th. And Miskatonic High 11 is coming to Kickstarter soon. If you want, go search it up and click the notify me on launch. That way you can know right when uh, Miskatonic High hits Kickstarter. If you're new to it, you can get issues 1 through 11. Do the whole catch up. You can even get the hardcover uh, version and all the issues up to 11. So check out that the team is going to go back in time to the ancient times of the 1990s. But can they avoid a time stalker long enough to learn the secrets that the past is holding? So check out Miskatonic High 11 on Kickstarter soon. So go to there, click the notify me list, join the, mil join the handful of us that are, not millions, uh, that are excited about this and uh, then you will be notified the day it launches. You'll get an email and it'll be awesome. This land number two, that's what I got in my mailbox so I'm gonna have to read that one soon. Uh, this, this land number two is gonna be on Kickstarter soon so go to that one as well. Hit the notify me on launch button and uh, you will know when this land number two hits Kickstarter. In a world Reborn with the powers of the Maori gods, Helna must guide, must guide Tain in search of the demigod Maui. Oh man, so you've already grabbed me right there. I'm a huge fan. Maui is one of my characters in Peter Pan the Vampire, so whenever Maui shows up in anything, I'm, in, I'm already sold. Uh, and if he's done right, man, you've got a fan for life. Uh, so can't wait to see how that goes. Uh, I do know that there is some really cool lava powers in this one. I don't know if they're modeled after Pele, but uh, that sounds pretty cool. So check out this land, number two. It is coming to Kickstarter soon, so go get the Notify Me launch button, and then you will know what's going on. Infinity Agents 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. Oh, wait, it's not on Kickstarter yet. It is going to be on Kickstarter. Go find Infinity Agents 1 through 3 and hit the uh, Notify Me on Launch button as well on that one. Interstellar Adventure with Aliens, Mecha, Monsters, Superheroes, Cosmic Kaijus, and all this stuff. Um, so check out Infinity Agents 1 through 3. Coming to Kickstarter soon. Notify Me on Launch button. All that fun stuff. And uh, I just recently watched... Uh, the last episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Really cool stuff. And oh, dang that Johnny Walker, huh? Uh, it kind of makes me sad for uh, naming my boy Johnny, but he's named after a lot of other Johnnies, not this Johnny. So Johnny Walker, you can just take your cheap shield and uh, be your US agent self somewhere else. Anyway, jo Johnny Walker aside, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, oh man, great ending, insane stuff, uh, I can't believe Agent Carter on that one, so I hope none of these are spoilers, I'm being as vague as I can, but it was so amazing, and that last episode of Invincible, I just watched it just before pushing record on this, and holy crap, Invincible is, it's amazing, uh, they 
They filmed this version way different than, well, not way different, but they did it a little bit different than the uh, comic book version. So there were some surprises in there, at least because, yeah, the first time around reading it, nobody knew anything was going on. And this time reading it, uh, like, as a viewer, you knew what was going on. Because they they hinted at it. They even showed Nolan killing all the Guardians of the Globe. So it wasn't a surprise, like, at the very end, like it was for us reading it. Anyway, check out Invincible and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They were awesome shows. And Lovecraft Country. That one was one I recently wrapped up watching. And it was so hard to finish watching it because... Not because it was a hard show to watch... But because HBO does not know how to get their act together. Their app was so frustrating. Uh, starting on the 25th of this month, I will no longer have HBO. Um, it, my, I'm letting the subscription lapse. It's done. And uh, because every time I would go to watch an episode, it was always stuck on episode 2. And if I watched episode 3, it would go back to episode 2. And then after I watched episode 4 back and then you know so on and so forth all the way to the very end it kept going back to episode two so and it you can't watch a show like that if every time you come back to it it comes and you have to sit there and skip you can't ever find the episode menu on that damn dang show sorry anyway hbo i'm done with you i don't even know if i'll be able to watch that mortal kombat show is it on there yet anyway uh, New Mutants is on HBO, so I'm going to watch that at least five more times before this week is up. So, yeah, I got a lot of breaks coming up. I work weekends, and so uh, during my breaks and lunches at work, I'm going to watch as much New Mutants from HBO as I can until the uh, app disappears from my phone. But do check out Lovecraft Country. It was awesome. They did a really good job on it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it... It was insane, the things that they pulled off on that show. So good stuff. That's probably going to be in my top ten of shows for the year. Do check that one out. All right. Podcasts. What podcast should you check out? Um, I've been listening to Off Panel by uh, Andy Schmidt. So that one's a pretty cool one um, from the comics experience. Geek History Lesson. That one's really good. And... Uh, yeah, I, I still don't know what happened to uh, Two Scout Ge Geeks. Two Scout Geeks used to talk about all the uh, Scout comics that were going on, and all of a sudden that show just stopped. And uh, so if you're out there listening to me, Scout Geeks, uh, I was a fan, and I would like you to come back. But I, I understand things get busy. Maybe uh, life or kids. Kids is a big one. And uh, so anyway... For the Love of Indy is a uh, partner to Two Scout Geeks, and I think it's still going. There was a last episode recently, and so do check out those. Um, and Inside of You podcast, Michael Rosenbaum, who you may know as Lex Luthor from Smallville. That's a good, uh, good uh, podcast to listen to. And yeah, I can't think of any other ones to let you know about right now, so... If you're listening to podcasts, and you, or if you make a podcast, hit me up. Say, hey, check out my podcast. All right, so, yeah, my computer's still being weird. Having computer problems with my microphone. So I haven't been able to do any creating on my comic book lately. And so that's some things i got to work out. But I'm so busy with the wedding plans and family stuff and housework, building the house and uh, stuff like that that I, oh man, just everything's going crazy right now, and I still have my full-time job, so, and I still have a toddler in the house, <laughs> it's just nuts, anyway, enough excuses, uh, do check out all the things that I've mentioned in this show, and as always, if you have a comic book you think I should know about, send me some uh, messages, any of the a, um, Twitters, or Facebook, you can find me as Rentnarp Studios. Um, hit me a message on those. Say, hey, check out my uh, Kickstarter, and you can even share it to my page. I don't care, because that'll make me see it, and uh, it'll make me happy. And if it's a good comic, I will freaking back that stuff 
as far as you will go. So uh, if you have a Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaign out there, hit me up, tell me about it, and uh, I will give you a shout out on the show. Whether I back it or not, you'll still get a shout out. And uh, because I, nothing helps out more than uh, some dummy like me telling other people to check out things. Anyway, so that's the end of my notes today. Yep. Best of. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching Gary Brantner on Renard Studios Comics. And uh, thank you for messaging me about your Kickstarters when you do. And all that fun stuff. Do check out all the Kickstarters I've mentioned today. If you follow me on Twitter, you will see me posting those all day long. And uh, that's one of my favorite things to do, is to shine some light on these Kickstarters, get get them in front of eyes that might not other, otherwise see them. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of my family members are tired of it, but uh, yeah, it is showing a lot of people that know me for comics and don't don't really collect comics, but they're going to get to know these because I'm sharing. I don't know. Wow, I should have just stopped right there. Anyway, thank you for watching. Gary Brantner of Renarb Studios. I'm out.